Exodus 1, starting in verse 7. Please stand for the reading of God's Word. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. Keep in mind, this is after Joseph died. And there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built Pharaoh treasures cities. Let's uh, jump down to, th or actually, let's continue. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians, this is the starting point, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. That's like exhaustive work. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service, in the field, all their service, wherein they made them serve was with rigor. You may be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I... Come before you, Lord, needing your help. Lord God, I'm nothing but dust, and I can't preach without you, Father. I can't feed your flock without you, Father, without your presence, without your guidance, Lord. I'd just be standing up here without you, Lord. I pray that you lead me and guide me and help me to get out the way. I pray that you use me, Lord, and not only about me, Lord, but I pray that you lead these people, and I pray, Lord, that if a soul... Is you not saved among us, Lord? I pray that they get saved, Lord. Father, I pray that they get out of, e out of Egypt, Lord, and bondage of sin, Lord. I pray that they get saved. Yeah. Please help me, Father. Please guide me, Lord. Please hide me behind the cross. Forgive me where I fall short, and please lead us all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Amen. So my first point is... Well, let me say this. Let me uh, expound a little bit. So the children of Israel, they was in Egypt. And uh, this is when Joseph died. That, as we read, there's a new uh, king over e Egypt, which is a pharaoh. And he didn't like that the children of Israel were growing and mightier than them. So, they, so he put the children of Israel into hard bondage, into hard slavery. And bondage, here's the definitions. Bondage is slavery or involuntary servitude, captivity, imprisonment, restraint of a person's liberty by compulsion, which means force. And the definition of slavery is bondage. The state of entire subjection of one person to the will of another. So the children of Israel, they was made slaves. They was put in bondage in Egypt under the rule of Pharaoh because they was grown mightier. As we read, I say again, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And I just want to say, I'm, I don't know how to go about this, but I want to exposit this Exodus story. And I want to tell you three things I see. And the first thing I see is bondage. The first thing I see is bondage, slavery, amen. They was in slavery. And uh, they, they was to serve with rigor, exhaustive work. You know, like back in America, it was exhaustive work. And not all slavery is the same, amen. But it was exhaustive. They, they had me move bricks. It, it, we'll get the further on, amen. But they had to get straw for the bricks. But amen. I not only see slavery in uh, this Exodus story, only, but I see slavery today. 
Let's go to Romans 16, uh, Romans 16, 6, 16 to 23. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether to sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. This is talking about a saved person. If you ain't saved, you're a servant of sin still. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart the, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Amen. You see, you're, a, you're either a slave to sin, you're unsaved, you're, you got a, a shackle on you of sin, and you can't help yourself. You just keep on sinning. You, 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 who, whom you yield yourself to, who you obey, that's your master, amen? You're a servant of that. So you're either, you're either uh, dead in sin or you're dead to sin, amen? You see, if you're a saved, born-again Christian, you're set free from the bondage of sin, amen? You're justified. You're seen righteous in the sight of God, even though none of us are righteous. No, not one. But Jesus Christ is righteousness, perfectness, a 30-some years, amen? Didn't sin once, amen? And that righteousness is imputed to us, even though we fall short of God every single day. I testify, I do. Amen, I'm ashamed of it, but we each do, amen? The Bible says, none good, no not one. So, like I said, you're a slave to sin, or a slave to Jesus. You're dead in sin. You're, well, that, that means that once you sin, you're dead, you know, you're dead spiritually. You're, you're not alive. You're not born of the Spirit. You know, a Christian is, yeah, John 3, 3, amen, you're born of the Holy Ghost, amen. You realize things. Hey, I, I, before I was saved, I didn't really care much about sin. Yes, I had a consciousness. Yes, you had a consciousness before you were saved. You know, you feel bad about something, stealing a sucker or whatever, amen. But once you get saved, you start to resent that. You start to have a stronger hate for it. Amen. You, you start to realize your condition. You start to realize how... At least, you start to realize how much we fall short. How much of a sinner you and I are. Hey Amen. I'm not trying to beat you down. Hey Amen. You just think about God's grace while I'm telling you this. Hey Amen. You just realize your condition. You realize the things you fall short of. I heard this like it's close. The closer you get to God, the more you see yourself basically in the light of who you really are. Hey Amen. I know good sinner. We all, I am too. Hey Amen. We all are. But hey Amen. You're either dead in sin, and once you sin, uh, you break one of the Ten Commandments, you're guilty of them all, and if you sin, God cannot look on sin, so he made hell for the devil and his angels. Yeah. But the devil and his angels, they, re they rebelled against God, amen? So God made that, uh, made hell, amen? But if you follow the devil and his angels, yeah. you follow the, the, the father of lies, right. you're going to end up straight in hell with them. Right. You, he, he might get cast into hell of fire before you, I don't know the theology on that, but amen. What I'm saying is both of y'all are going to get cast into the fire if you follow the devil. But if you follow Jesus, amen, he'll set you free. And you're either under the law or under grace. This all ties together. Now, like I said, the Ten Commandments, you break one of them, you're guilty of them all. You see, without the grace of God, you have to be perfect to get into heaven. You have to be perfect your whole life. But you know, we, we come out the womb speaking lies. We all got uh, different types of sins. You know, I don't know what you deal with. But if you sin once, you're not perfect. You tell one white lie, uh-oh, you can't get into heaven no more if you're under the law. Amen. Y'all pray for me, amen. But you, you won't be able to get into heaven on your own merit. But if you ain't saved, if you ain't a slave to God, and if you're a slave to sin, amen, you're under the law, amen. And just like courts here, the law, it has to, uh, 
I don't know how to articulate this, amen, but it has to, you know, be set. It has, justice has to be done, amen. Yeah. And you break the law, you got to pay the crime. Yeah. If you sin, you, the wages of sin is death. Yeah. Amen. That's if you're not saved, if you're under the law. But if you're under God's grace, undeserved mercy, under the blood of Jesus, we're not going to heaven by our own merit. Right. We're going to heaven by Jesus, amen. Yeah. amen. He'll take them chains, them shackles of sin off you, amen. amen. Just come to the Lord. And uh, Matthew 6, 24, just in case anybody's confused. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. Amen. You know, I th I'm not being up on uh, gay people, but you think about them uh, pride, fe uh, pride parades, they are straight up mocking God because they're serving sin. Hey, I, I'm not saying this for any glory. I'm nothing. I fall short of God's glory every day. I'm just saying this for example. Like I was street preaching. I just had a sign up. I wasn't even using my bullhorn. They were saying, cry out to God. And you got people cussing you out, uh, going past, uh, driving past me, people cussing me out, uh, all types of stuff. You know why? Because God ain't their master. Right. Yep. Either hate the, hate the one and love the other. They love their sin. Amen. And I know slave, we might not uh, understand or, you know, we don't, we don't hear that word a lot, but you're a slave to sin or a slave to God. Amen. Think about uh, what the woman said uh, to Jesus. She said, Rabbi, which is being interpreted, Master. Amen. And uh, not only do I see slavery today in a spiritual sense, and this could tie into spiritually, but I see it in uh, addiction. Uh, I see it in smoking, vaping, amen, and I feel empathy for these people. I don't smoke, but I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to help you, amen. I, so if you smoke, amen, the repeated use of tobacco products over time causes a person to become physically and psychologically dependent on them. You became kind of a slave to it. Now, I'm not saying you ain't saved. Amen. You got one master. You can't serve her. Amen. But, but we, could come, we could start, you know, people with addiction, y'all forgive me, but people with addiction, they become dependent on things. They start serving things. They, they keep on going back to it, going back to it, going back to it. They're addicted. <laughs> Amen. I had a... a and I say smoking and vaping because I see people smoking outside the church. Amen. And I'm not afraid to, I'm preaching on it because I love you. Amen. I'm not preaching on the individual. I'm not preaching on a thread. I'm preaching on the whole blanket. Amen. People who smoke, you're killing yourself. You know, I've I seen it firsthand many times. My aunt, before she died, she had COPD from smoking. She, uh, she could barely walk. Carrying an oxygen tank, got tubes up her nose, <sighs> got to do treatments, and the, CB, uh, the COPD caught up to her. She got on the couch, began mucus in her lungs, couldn't pass smoking. And you know what she told my dad, which was her caretaker at the time? She said, Let me die. It was so painful. It, 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 it caught up to her. Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm telling you as a brother in Christ, or even if you ain't saved, amen, to quit smoking, amen. amen. Throw that cancer stick out. Throw that cancer box out, amen. It's not good for you. No, you're not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, amen. I'm trying to help you, amen. Amen. It's good. amen. Hey, I'm not just cutting the bushes. I'm mowing the lawn and cutting. I'm doing it all, amen. I ain't preaching on an individual. Amen. And uh, not only smoking and vaping, and I'll say this too before I go on, uh, the nicotine, it goes to the brain and it, uh, it releases dopamine, like a pleasure feeling. You know, they want more, they want more, they want more. But amen, I, I, if you trust in the Lord, if you let him uh, take you through the, uh, I forgot what it's called, uh, y'all forgive me, you know where people, they go through withdrawals, they don't smoke, they 
uh, they stop at it. That stuff will get out your system, amen. You won't have the strong cravings you do, amen. Just trust in the Lord. It'll take that away from you. I see it in alcohol, amen. Yeah. An addiction of Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Amen. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm just preaching. Amen. Yeah. You know, we got a problem in the church. Amen. You know, there ain't no social drinker Christians. Amen. I'm not preaching on an individual either. Don't think that. I'm preaching on everybody. Amen. You ought to put cigarettes down. You ought to put the alcohol down. Amen. That could be a stumbling block. Imagine a Christian was a chronic alcoholic. They got saved out of that. And they could be tempted every time they're around. Every time in a conversation. Smell it in all your breath. Amen. Just put it down. Just give it to the Lord. He'll take it away. Amen. I see it. This is not preached a lot. Uh, the addiction is not only smoking and alcohol, but gluttony. Amen. Gluttony. I'm not preaching on an individual. Amen. And I say this too. An uh, uh, overweight person is not only, uh, they aren't only, uh, like, I'm not saying, I'm saying someone who overeats and gets big, amen, they're not only gluttons. You could be as skinny as a telephone pole and you could be a glutton, amen. You could be a stop sign, amen, and you could be a glutton. You could have a good metabolism and have a heart attack, amen, because you're a glutton. But uh, we, we, you could... Basically become a slave serving food, amen? Craving more. You go back to it. You do, do it more than what God wants you to, amen? I'm not saying you can't get full, amen? Hey, I'm in a Baptist church, hallelujah. But we shouldn't be sitting here like uh, Elon, amen, uh, Eglon, amen, after every meal, amen? I can't walk. We shouldn't do that, amen, every meal, amen? And that'll catch, up, that'll catch up to you, too. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, amen? amen? I'm trying to help you, amen? That stuff will kill you. Hey, I was in ROTC when I was in high school, and uh, uh, the, I guess you'd call it the commander or whatever, he said that he had a family member, her own body collapsed in on herself, and she died. Amen? Gambling. Lottery tickets. You know, you, you keep on going back. You're going back. You're wasting more money than you're trying to get, amen. But you keep on going back, getting the scratch off. Oh, maybe next time. Oh, maybe next time. Oh, I didn't get it today. I'll try next week. Oh, maybe next time. Going to bingo and stuff, amen. You start serving that. I ain't saying you ain't saved if, you know, if you struggle with these things. Sanctification is a process. I'm just saying, amen. Give it to the Lord. Uh, shopping. Could become an addiction. Amen. Hey, I don't like this preaching. This preacher preaching on everything. Hey, I'm not saying shopping is bad, but some people, I believe it. I, I took a finance class, and I believe over 70 percent of America is in debt. You know, living paycheck by paycheck. And you know why? Because they they basically serve shopping. They don't need it, but they keep on going. Every time they get money, they they do it. They do it. They don't need it at all. They just do it. Amen? Start sir. It could come addiction. And I, this is definitely preaching on everybody, including myself. Amen? I, like you said, shoot with a 30-30. Amen? I, I'm holding a grenade, and I'm holding it. Amen? A phone. Amen? We could get to the point so many times. We put it before God. We serve it. Amen? You know, you just watch one video. And it goes to another video. Oh, you get on Facebook, 10 minutes, one hour, a few hours. YouTube. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, I'm preaching to younger people. Uh, TikTok. <laughs> Amen. You keep on going back to it. You keep on obeying it. Amen. And I'm not downing people. These, these could be some serious addictions somebody's really struggling with. Amen. Give it to the Lord. Amen. He'll take them shackles off. And like I said, sanctification is a process. Hey, when I got saved, I didn't automatically just quit cussing. Amen? It was, I used to, I'm, not, I'm not trying to glorify sin or me. or It's not about me. I'm just saying. When I got saved, the Holy Spirit started working in me and them things that I used to do so much, they started fading away. 
it, it does the same for every Christian. Amen? Uh, now I see a command. Amen? Uh, ex, let's go to Exodus 3, 7 to 10. I know we just read a bit of it. Not, yeah, y'all excuse me. We haven't read that. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Keep in mind, this is the children of Israel, amen. He said, my people, amen, uh, which are in Egypt and heard, have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them. And he's, he's saying he's going to uh, deliver them, take them to the place flowing with milk and honey, amen, which is Israel, the land of Canaan. And uh, now therefore, behold, the cry of the... Uh, of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Now this is a command. He's talking to Moses at this point. This is when God's in the burning bush talking to Moses. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people out of the uh, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen. Yeah. Out of the bondage. Uh, Exodus three sixteen eighteen. He said, Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that, that which is done to you in Egypt. And I, y'all, I pray y'all have patience with me. Amen. There's a lot of reading tonight. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the, of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of Canaan and it talks about of the Hittites and he's going to bring them out of the land but he commanded Moses to go on to Pharaoh, amen and y'all forgive me, I tried not to be much in the notes but amen Just y'all just pray for me God commanded Moses out of the burning bush to go on to Pharaoh and basically to, to let his people go, amen because they was in bondage to uh, the Pharaoh Amen. And uh, Exodus five one. This is the first encounter of uh, Moses and uh, Pharaoh. Moses and Aaron, and Pharaoh, because Aaron was Moses' spokesman. Yeah. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, "Thus saith the Lord God of Israel: Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness." Amen. Most and uh, I forgot to mention this. Y'all, please forgive me. Amen. So Moses, he was, uh, the children of Israel, they was in bondage in Egypt. And after they was in bondage, Pharaoh ended up wanting to kill all the male babies. So Moses, his mom, he had Mo she had Moses. They put, her, put Moses in an ark of bulrushes in the river so the Egyptians couldn't kill him because she couldn't hide Moses anymore. And Pharaoh, uh, at first he commanded the Hebrew midwives, to, to uh, the ones that was helping deliver the Hebrew babies, to kill the male children. But they wouldn't do it. They feared God. They said we we're a lively people, amen, unlike the Egyptians. So since they disobeyed Pharaoh, he told his people, I want you to take all the male newborns and cast them into the river. Well, back to Moses, his mom hid him for, I believe it's three months, or I might, could be wrong on that, but a certain amount of months, amen, couldn't hide him no more. So made an ark of bulrushes, put him in that river, amen. And then Pharaoh's daughter comes with her maidens, and she sees the ark of bulrushes. It's like a, a whittle thing, y'all have to look it up, amen. But, uh, but Moses was in it, and she heard it, the cry of him, amen? She seen that. She opened it up, and she had compassion upon Moses. Yeah. So, amen? And Moses' sister was afar off seeing all that was done. So his sister said, shall I, I get a nurse to thee? Amen? I'm paraphrasing, but can I get a nurse? And this is Pharaoh's daughter. Moses' sister said, can I get a nurse? Amen? 
And uh, she said, go, and amen. Moses' sister got his mama. And his mama nursed him, amen. And then he grew. And then Moses went to Pharaoh's daughter and became a son to her. Amen. And then uh, Moses seen an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, amen. I guess it was a taskmaster, so I'm not sure. I'm not trying to add or take away. But amen, he seen a Hebrew smiting an Egyptian. His brethren, uh, I mean, an uh, uh, Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, which is Moses' brethren, because Moses is a Hebrew. So he slew the Egyptian and put him in the sand, amen. And then it, word came to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh sought to slay Moses. So Moses fled to Midian. Yeah. Amen. And you know, get the, uh, talking to Jethro and his daughters. And, uh, it all tied, and, and Midian was with the burning bush, amen. And I say all that to say, Moses came out of Egypt, then went back to tell God's people, amen, or to tell God's word. He came to Egypt, not to partake. He came back to Egypt, not to partake, but to proclaim God's word, amen. 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 Just like uh, Jesus was never a sinner, amen. He didn't sin once, but he sat with the sinners, amen. So I can't use that example. Him go, he, was, he went in the world, and he sat with sinners, amen. Uh, you know, you could uh, street preach outside of bars and clubs once you get saved. This is the analogy. Once you get saved, once you get taken out of the world, even though you're still in the world, you're not of the world, amen. And don't be a scaredy cat living, uh, trying to live America. You know... Moses could have lived the Midian dream. You know, he was with Jethro. They had cattle and stuff. He could have just sat there. You know, you could, you could uh, if you get wealthy or something, you could just live how you want. But now, God told Moses to tell his people, amen, and to tell Pharaoh that, uh, to let his people go, amen. I know I'm all over the place, but amen. Moses was telling Pharaoh God's word. And I'm saying that you could tell others, they're in bondage, or even leaders, amen. You could tell them God's word. And uh, Exodus, uh, I'm going to show you all all the times, thus saith the Lord. And this is, not all the times is Moses speaking, but it's God telling Moses to say this unto uh, Pharaoh. Uh, this is all in Exodus. 7, 17, thus saith the Lord. 8, 1, thus saith the Lord. 8, 20, thus saith the Lord. 9, 1, thus saith the Lord God. 9.13, thus saith the Lord God. 10.3, thus saith the Lord God. 11.4, thus saith the Lord God. Amen. He, Moses yeah. went out of Egypt, came back, and he's saying, thus saith the Lord God. Amen. We could do the same. Amen. Hey, I'm not saying go up in a bar and drink. Don't partake. But amen, if you got saved out of that mess, uh, you could see a drunkard walking down the street. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Mark 16.15. And he, this is Jesus, and he said unto them, this is a great commission. You know, Moses was commanded to tell God's word. We're commanded to tell God's word. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means the nice looking grandma that you don't think she'll say anything. And it also means the skinhead. Amen. That means the dude with the leathers on. Amen. That means the dude bumping... Uh, ungodly music, amen, every creature. Amen, even if you don't think they're going to accept it, you don't know. God knows the heart, but you never know. That person could be struggling, looking for truth, looking for hope, amen. And God could use you. Thus saith the Lord, amen. Just tell them, thus saith the Lord. And those out of Egypt, uh, yeah, we have a commission. And after Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh God's, uh, God's word, which is in 5.1, he said, and afterward, Moses and Aaron, uh, he told, this is the first encounter. He, they said this to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Amen. After they said that, Pharaoh was talking to, the, uh, talking to Aaron and Moses, and also he, he made the slavery harder for the Hebrews. He took their straw away to make brick. And the, why I say this is, you might get persecuted for saying God's word. Amen? It's not always going to be an easy task. 
to say, Thus saith the Lord, of the Lord, amen. You might get uh, persecuted, but John 15, 18 to 20, this is Jesus. If the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you, ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also, amen. Keep spreading the word, amen. Keep on telling, amen. You, you, might, you might have a bad encounter. You might have somebody cuss you out, give you a stink eye or whatever. American persecution ain't far as much as other countries, but we still get a little bit, amen. But don't get your feelings hurt over that. Keep on proclaiming. You know, Moses, he, he, even though they made it hard for the Hebrew slaves to, and took their straw away and told them to go get it for themselves, he kept on going. I believe it's ten times. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on it. But he went a whole bunch over five times to Pharaoh. He kept on saying, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. Let my people go. And in the midst of this, when, when Pharaoh didn't let him go, God sent wonders and plagues upon Egypt and Pharaoh. Amen? You keep on spreading the, the, the word of God. Amen? Keep on uh, being persistent. And, he, and, and uh, not only uh, you might suffer persecution, but in Egypt or in the world, there are counterfeits. It says there are magicians. Exodus 7, 10 to 11. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. Uh, had commanded. And Aaron cast down his... This is one of the first uh, wonders, amen, that God told him to do. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. Amen. Hey, some may look like they are of God, but they are not of God. Amen. Some may masquerade as they are doing things of God, but really it's just deception. False teachers. Amen. You know, there's this man, I don't care about calling out names. Amen. Todd, uh, Todd White is his name. You know, he, I was, I, I ain't going to go down that rabbit trail. He grabs people's shoes, and, and they, he, like, makes... I, I wish I'd seen the video. He makes it seem like he's growing people's foot out just by a little deception, a gesture of the foot, amen? He's a false teacher, and he's preaching in a church. He's a magician, amen? And there's a lot of magicians in America, also in Africa, amen? You, might, you know, even like Jehovah Witnesses. Some people that ain't saved, they might think of that as godly. Oh, he got some type of word, Book of Mormon. He told me it's the word of God, a new revelation. Hey, I don't know if that's Christian. Because most people, they don't even know about denominations. They just bunch everybody together. I did when I was unsaved, amen. They don't know about that stuff, amen. Even some Christians don't know about denominations and the differences of uh, Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons. So they just bunch, uh, not Christians, but you know, if Christians don't understand, what do you think the world's going to look at us like? Amen? And they're more easily deceived by magicians. False religions. Like I said, Jehovah Witnesses, Book of Mormon, Apocrypha. That ain't the word of God, amen? Some magician put that together. The Book of Enoch, all that type of stuff. Amen? You following a magician. Uh, false gods. Now, this breaks my heart. It so dearly breaks my heart. I was in uh, Kroger, and I tried to hand this man. I didn't know he's a Muslim, but he's a Muslim. I tried to hand him a gospel track, and he said, it's ain't quote, 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 but this is what a lot of Muslims say. We follow the same Jesus. Man, I about to tear up. When I, when I was talking to him, I told him the differences that God, Jesus is God, the deity. He's not Isa. 
Amen. But it, it just, it, I, just something in me, amen. Him thinking that he knows Jesus. He's being fooled by a magician, amen. Yeah. Hey, Muhammad is a magician. He's a deceiver. And it breaks my heart that people think that they know God, that they know Jesus, but they really don't because some low-down, dirty magician, amen, deceiver, false teacher, amen, like, uh, amen, I just let it rip, and I'm not saying this for my own glory. I think every Christian, it says after the first and second omnition, reject, amen. That's Bible. Amen. But people like Kenneth Copeland, he's a magician. He's a false teacher. He's a wolf in sheep clothing. They sh Like Benny Hinn, amen. Y'all watch out for people in this. I heard some people in the church tell me they used to watch him. Uh, T.D. Jakes. That's a false teacher. That's a magician. That's a deceiver. And you know, sometimes they might have Bible in it. They might have truth in their preaching. But then they add that, that false teaching in, and that's, it makes it dangerous. Amen. It makes, sometimes it makes it hard to discern. But like they say to people that have medical issues, that, that are going through tough things, I'm paraphrasing, but I know this, I know it happens. Amen. They tell people like, uh, sow a harvest. Don't forgive me. I can't think of it right now. Sow a seed, reap a harvest. The more you give, the more you're going to get a blessing. That's a disgrace to God. And it's happening all over America. Don't be blinded because we're in a church that has Bible preachers. I'm grateful for my mentors. Amen. But not every church is like this church. And you, I was street preaching... And a dude came up to me, and he gave me a little invite to his church, and it ended up, it was linking to Greg Locke. That stuff, he's a magician. Amen? I try to hurry up, amen. I try to keep you all along. Uh, and keep in mind, the magicians, they did so. They did so. But ended up, at the end, they said, surely this is the finger of God. They can't yeah. keep up with God. Yeah. You know, there's going to come a day when all them magicians stand before God. They ain't going to be able to replicate it. They ain't going to be able to, able to pervert it. The things of God, the truth, amen. You better get right before God, amen. If you're a magician, God could save you, friend. God could save Kenneth Copeland, any false teacher, amen, if you come to him. Do it before it's too late. So I see bondage. I see a command. And finally, I see deliverance. Yes, yes. So keep in mind, it, the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt, amen. All the wonders and going back and forth with Pharaoh, Moses, and Aaron did, saying, thus saith the Lord, it comes to deliverance, amen. Exodus 3, 7 to 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are in, the, in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Listen to this. For I know their sorrows. You know, Jesus, he was tempted and all that, but without sin, amen. But I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver, amen. God is the same yesterday, for today, and forever. Amen. It says, uh, for time's sake, I won't uh, tell you, but Luke 4, 18, amen. And that's... That's going back to Isaiah, amen. That's a parallel that Jesus was talking about. It's talking about sending the captives free. I had come. The Lord put it on me to preach, amen. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land of, uh, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto, a place of, unto the place of Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Amen. Exodus 6, 6, 7. 6 to 7. Wherefore I say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I, I will bring them out up from under the burden. Y'all bear with me. Amen. Just take all this in. The burdens of, each of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, amen. The Lord, his arm is not too short, amen. He could save anybody. With a stretched out arm and will uh, with great judgments. And I will take you unto me for a people, and I will let you uh, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall 
You shall be my people. Amen. I know I'm messing this all up. But amen. I see deliverance. Amen. This is with deliverance. I see Jesus standing on the Father's right hand. Amen. Over in the promised land. Hey, I see Jesus. You know, communion, the Passover lamb was taken in the middle of the Passover. Amen. Amen. The last wonder was the last plague that God sent upon Pharaoh for rebelling, not listening, hearkening to his word. He kept on uh, saying, I'll let you go, and then, nope, nope, amen. But the last plague upon Pharaoh was the death of the firstborn, yeah. even of the cattle. Amen? And, uh, amen? Uh, let me just say this, because I don't want to, amen. Uh, Jesus is the Passover lamb. God told the children of Israel, uh, get the blood, and I'm paraphrasing, there's more details, but amen. He said, get the blood of the lamb, amen. You got to put it on the doorpost, amen. You got to have the blood on the doorpost, amen. amen. And when he passes over, he said, I will pass over you. Amen. But the ones without the blood, their firstborn, death is going to pass upon them, amen. amen. And it did. Exodus, uh, Exodus 12, 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the uh, in the land of Egypt, and from the firstborn of Pharaoh, no respecter of persons. Listen to this. You better get saved. It don't matter how much money you make, any of that, amen. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Even the cattle. And Pharaoh Ray arose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where they was not where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses. This is Pharaoh. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and uh, and said, he. I'm just gonna paraphrase. He said, get get out, amen. He told them to leave. And you know, if you don't got the blood of Jesus on you, amen, just like they had the Passover lamb, the blood on the door, amen, if you're not justified, if you, if you ain't saved, if you don't get that righteousness imputed to you, if you're under the law, not under grace, you cannot go to heaven by your own merit. If God does not see the blood of Jesus on you, death is going to pass on you. Amen. The wages of the sin is death. Is death. Is death. Do you got the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen? Because God's going to, there's going to come a judgment day. Could be today, tomorrow. I don't know. I don't got a date. Amen? But He's going to come as a thief in the night. Or if you die, you could wake up in hell. That's a scary thing, friend. Think about God gives you emotions. He gives you love. He gives you all them things. I don't know how to articulate this, but I don't know if it's all going to be taken away or what. I just know hell ain't a place you don't want to go. Amen. Uh, hell is a place you don't want to go, I mean. Right. Amen. And after Pharaoh, the, the Passover lamb, and the death passed upon all the ones without the blood, uh, Pharaoh told them, as I said, he, he, they said to get out the land, the Moses and the children of Israel, finally get out the land. But he changed his mind as the, as the children of Israel, they was making their way to serve the Lord. And the land flowing with milk and honey, they was making their way to it. And he changed his mind. And uh, you can see that in Exodus 4. God forgive me, amen. But he pursued after the, Egyptian, after the Hebrews, amen, after the children of Israel with uh, Pharaoh and his army and his horsemen. Amen. I'm almost done, yeah. Y'all bear with me. Uh, 1426 to 30. Let's go to uh, Exodus. 1426 to 30. Well, I'll just set, tell you all this to save some time. So God, He did this for His honor. The children of Israel, they probably could have went 
you know, with a place without an interaction of the Egyptians. But God did this for his honor to where they'd basically meet. I'm, y'all forgive me, I ain't trying to mess it up. I'm just going by my memory, amen. But uh, it came to pass that the Egyptians, they was behind the children of Israel. But keep in mind, there's a pillar a day and a pillar by night, amen. God was leading them, amen. Yeah. When I thought about that, it, it made me think that the pillar had, a, amen, a shepherd's hook, amen. But he's leading the children of Israel. And he got to the Red Sea. I don't know if it's a dead end, but amen. The children of Israel, they got scared. And they started, uh, they started backsliding on Moses, amen. I'm just joking. But they started murmuring. They started getting scared, getting afraid. But, uh, oh, forgive me. I had this and it went out. They started getting scared, and Moses, and this is after they was getting scared, you know, and telling Moses, you know, we should have basically been back in Egypt. Uh, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Amen. So, I'm trying to save y'all time. Amen. So, they got to this point. Amen. They got to the... Uh, the, the Red Sea, amen. And God told Moses to part the Red Sea, and he did. The children went in, the children of Israel. And then behind them uh, was Egypt, amen. Uh, the Pharaoh and his Egyptian army, amen. It was following them. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, amen, the water came on them. It overthrew them. God overthrew them, amen. And the waters returned and covered their, the, chari the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remain not so much as one of them. Amen. Don't be messing with God. Amen. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus saith, uh, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the land. Amen. I want to close. Uh, I'm almost done. Amen. I know every preacher tells y'all this. Uh, but uh, just as God washed away Pharaoh and his army, he could wash away your sin. Yeah. Think about that water of the Red Sea. Amen. Hey, God said, as far as the east is from the west. Amen. He'll wipe them clean. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to paraphrase this, but though you're Sin be red like scarlet, amen. He's going to make them white as snow yep. if you just get that blood of the Passover lamb on you, if you get the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross. I'll tell you the gospel real quick. You and I have sinned. We're on our way to hell. But even though we deserve hell, even though we're on our way to hell, God came in the flesh, fully man, sure yet fully God, lived a sinless life unlike you and I, he died on a cross. He paid our sin debt. You and I broke God's law, but God paid the fine. Yeah. He died, put in a sepulcher, rose on the third day. And the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. I cannot save you. No preacher could save you. No man could save you. No magician could save you. Only God can save you by his grace. Amen. Amen. I'll try to finish up. Amen. Jesus can set you free. Break the bonds of sin. Amen. Uh, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. And I'll tell you this simple truth that holds many people back. Amen. For those who give out gospel tracts. You might have heard somebody say, I'm not ready. 
I'm not ready. This simple truth, while I was working, I just thought about this. You don't, and it's the thing after this, but amen. You don't meet God where he's at. He meets you where you're at. He met the children of Israel in Egypt, amen. He met you in the world. But amen. But God will change you, and sanctification is a process. Amen. Just like I'm not, amen, y'all ain't Catholic priests. I ain't confessing my sins to y'all. But just like I said, I, I, I was struggling with cussing. I got saved. It wasn't taken away like that, amen. But God, sanctification is a process. And people think, just listen to this. If you had to be perfect before you came to God, you wouldn't. Y'all hear me? Amen. Amen. If you had to be perfect before you came to God, you wouldn't. And so many people that I'm not ready. I got to stop doing this first. I got to lay that bottle down. I, you must repent, yes. But you don't, because we're not perfect is the reason we're going to God. Amen. I hope this helped y'all. Let, let's pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord God, I, Lord, I pray that, that you do something with this message, Lord. I'm nothing but dust. I pray, Lord, that this help one of your sheep. I pray, Lord, that you help us all to align with your word. Please help all the ones in the study of your word. Please help us all, Lord. I pray, Lord, that people see that they're in bondage in need of a deliverer, and I pray, Lord, that they go to you, that they cry out to you. I pray, Lord, the ones in the midst of sin, in the midst of Egypt, Lord, in this world, I pray, Lord, that they get saved. Lord, I thank you for this great privilege, this great honor, Lord, to even say one word of yours. Lord, all glory to you. I'm nothing without you, Lord. I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name.